What's happening, everyone? It's Peter. I actually want to talk about one of my favorite hacks for young kids to have a good time. And if you have uh, young kids at home, toddlers, maybe infants that are starting to move around, they need some activity, they want to play, you're tempted to take them to a playground, you are tempted to get them out of the house, they get a little bored in the house, maybe you want to meet up with some of your friends and their kids for a play date, I would say that Kids under five, under four are probably the target range for this. But one of the things that happens here in the Midwest is that it becomes inhospitable to play outside for nine months of the year. Honestly, in the summer, there are some days where you just wouldn't go out and play either. But right now, there's snow on the ground. You could take the kids out to a playground, but most of the time, you're not going to. In many cases, they're closed up for the winter, so some of them have fences. Some of them are open. Their equipment just isn't on them, like the swings and some of those things. However... There are some alternatives, and the popular ones are some of the big names here. So the biggest one is Kids Empire. So they're an indoor playground. They have a whole structure that you can climb. So it's probably good for kids six, seven, eight years old. They have a toddler area, but in the toddler range four, three, and two, there's a play area for them as well. There's another one around here called the Treehouse Play Cafe, which is like treehouse themed. And again, they have an older kid playground area and then a younger kid toddler play area. And both of those are great. They're fantastic because they're indoors. It's predictable. They're open late. They're generally pretty safe and secure. So you can even drop off your kids, grab a coffee, sit at a table, chit chat with your friends. I like doing that. But one of the issues is that they're expensive. And even though the fee that you pay gets your kid in there all day, unless they're old enough, like six or seven or eight years old, and the kids are going to stay there for many hours, like a whole afternoon, maybe have lunch there. Most kids, especially the younger ones, are only going to play for about 30, 45 minutes. And to get in is anywhere from 19 or $20. Even though that covers the whole day, really what you're paying is like 19, 20 bucks for 30 or 40 minutes, right? In my case, my son, Theo, really hits his limit around 40, 45 minutes. And then he'll even lay on the ground and just start to nap there. So that's his limit. So if you think about that per hour, I'm actually paying like $25 or $30 an hour because we're just not even getting a full hour's use out of the play area. So that can become pretty expensive, especially if you want your kid to get out, burn some calories, wear themselves out, have some exercise, learn to run, learn to play, take some risks, get on some equipment that you're not going to have at home. And there's some other ones here. There's a trampoline park, and those are all equally as expensive. And the problem with that is it's just a budget breaker if you want to use it a lot. One of the things that I have found here are really a couple of alternatives. The first one, you may have thought about this already, is libraries. I went and I actually got a library card from my local library. I haven't actually been to the library in years. And they actually have three play areas for kids. In fact, my son was enamored by this big kind of glow peg board. And he actually spent like 30, 40 minutes on that alone. He was just really intrigued by it. They had another area where there were some crafts and big Lego bricks that you could attach to a platform. And then they had more of a traditional play area that had a little house and toys. So three distinct areas separate from each other. So it didn't look like one big play area. And so you could take your kid there and take them to that dedicated area and they could have a good time. Now, I would say my local library does not have the best kids play area. In fact, the one up in Wakanda actually has a better one. They even have a slide inside. So they had more stuff, more structures. It was almost like a play area built for kids two to four, things that they could climb on, things that they could crawl through. So even a bigger play area. And the beautiful thing about that is in our area, if you have a library card, it works at the other area libraries. But for most of these, unless you're checking out something, you're going to take something home, you're going to check out movies or books or something, you can just walk in. You don't even need a library card and use those facilities, take your kids to some of these play areas. And it's great. And between that and the Cook Memorial Library System and the Wakanda and Ela, and there are a number of libraries here that have really great little play areas for kids. So that's a free one, and you can definitely use that in the winter. The next one are malls. And this one has actually surprised me a little bit because I haven't been to a mall in a while. Who does shopping in person anymore? Most of us do it online. We've heard malls are dead, and there is a lot of vacancy at malls, right? But most malls now in order to entice people to come and shop, to bring their kids, have put in these play areas. Now, I'm going to talk about a couple separately here because I think they're unique and different. First of all, there's a mall pretty close to me called Hawthorne Mall, and they have a play area that's in the lower area in the walkway. And so what they've done is they've built a wall around this play area, 
And there are little structures. They're like these industrial foam structures. So they have a little bit of give. If you were to hit your head in it, it feels a little bit like rubber. So that's nice. They're pretty safe. And they also have a very spongy floor. And the nice thing about it is they have shoe cubbies. So they are enticing you to take off your shoes. There's no one monitoring it. I noticed many parents wouldn't take off the shoes. Most of them are sitting around in the seats around the outer area of it. So not a big deal. They probably try to do a good job of cleaning it up. But for the kids, it keeps the wear down on the play structures. And because it's carpeted, they get good traction, right? And so that's free. It's actually pretty good. It's pretty large. I noticed a lot of families there. And so there's a lot of kids interacting. So you can get a little bit of socialization for your kid. And like I said, it's free. So it's very budget friendly and it's a pretty good little experience. So there were a couple of little slides, maybe only three feet tall, but there aren't really big structures, nothing multi-level or anything like that. And this is actually pretty typical of what I've seen in malls, just like a playpen area. And so you're just going to go in there and watch your kid and, and it corrals them. It's not a place where you would leave the kid because they can easily walk out. Now there's another one actually at Northbrook Court Mall. And they actually have two play structures. So they actually have one just like that in the corridor area. And it's like a tree house and there was climbing available and structures that they could play on and climb on. And so that was really nice. It was more open and it's actually geared, I think, a little bit for the older kids. But they actually had that right on the main floor. The second one is actually where a store used to be. So it prevents them all from just having an obvious vacant storefront. So it's the space of a normal sized retail store. And in there, it's really geared towards toddlers. In fact, I didn't see any kids there that were over the age of four or five. And they had a slide, a probably about a four or five foot tall slide. They had a building structure where you could crawl through. They also had in that structure some boxes that you could climb up to get to a rope walkway. But you actually probably had to be three or four to be able to climb up on that box. My 18-month-old was not tall enough to be able to climb on the box. So that's how they prevent the kids that are too small from getting into some of the areas that they shouldn't be in. They also have plenty of seating for the adults, so you can just sit there. There was a gate, so the kids can't leave. There's even a door that the kids can't push open, kind of your regular retail glass door, but a gate that prevents them from leaving the play area. So that's a nice way to go if you're doing some shopping anyway. One parent can stay there with the kids, but I actually just took my kid there. I wasn't doing any shopping at all. There's no one there to monitor it, so no one's making sure that you're spending money there. So those are really good free alternatives. Now, I want to explain what we have on the other end because some people might be tempted to just go there. Cole's Children's Museum is great. They have a lot of exhibits. A lot of them are science-based, so they tend to be educational on top of that. But it's $20 a kid and $20 an adult. And it's probably the most expensive way to go. If you and your kid are going, you're $40 into it just to go there and, again, spend probably an hour. But they have a great setup here. Lots of different areas to play in. They have storefronts. They have a little a train set that's mimicking the Chicago L train system. They have a water section that shows boats floating and how sails work. They have a grocery store set up. So a lot of different stuff there. It's definitely worth the visit, but it's also probably the most expensive type. And I'm not sure that the little kids really appreciate everything there because they're not going to necessarily experience everything, especially if they're only going to play for 30 or 40 minutes. So on one hand, you have really great setups, really great exhibits, but they're very expensive for the whole family. In the middle, you have just more of your local playgrounds indoors, which are a pretty good value because the parents usually get it for free. The kids are what you pay. So instead of $40 for a parent and a kid at Cole's Children's Museum, you're only going to be $20 at something like Kids Empire or the Tree Playhouse Cafe. But on the other end, just slightly less elaborate than the indoor playgrounds, a little smaller, a little more geared to the younger kids are the mall playgrounds, the mall play sets, which are completely free. So if you're looking for a way to stretch the legs of your kid this winter while you're indoors and you don't want to break the bank on some of these other options, check out your local mall, check out your local libraries for some of those play sets. I think it might save you a bunch of money. So that's my tip for today. Hope that helps you and your kids. I'll see you later.